Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. Earlier this year, the Ford Motor Company launched a national program designed to recognize and honor the accomplishments of black men in America. The initiative is called Men of Courage, and its goal is to strengthen communities and create positive social change. The program brings together African American men with inspirational stories and ideas on how to improve the perception of black men in society. Throughout my whole life, I've been judged on based how I look and where I'm from. I had a mother that was on drugs and a father that was absent. I ended up going through a number of foster homes. So no matter what I do, I'm just gonna end up dead or in jail. I've been blind in my left eye. None of the men wanted to coach our teams. I was being kicked out for the same reason. No one tried to reach me. Until one day I was in the store minding my own business and this airline pilot walks up to me and says, hey son, have you ever thought about becoming a pilot? My response to him was, I don't think I'm smart enough to fly an airplane. Think about that. One man could change the world. And one man could change the world. Storytelling is where it all began, but we have given up so much of who we are because we've allowed other people to tell our stories. There's a big disconnect between who I know we are as African-American men and who everyone else says we are. Even though we don't all necessarily know each other, we do know each other because we have these shared experiences. Now it's about moving forward and where we want the narrative of black men, African-American men to go. We can do this. Challenges are inevitable. Being defeated is optional. According to the status quo, I'm not supposed to be standing here. And I think all of us should buck the system and say, we are supposed to be here. He looks like the angry black guy that Sean was talking about earlier today, right? But Barrington was actually the youngest man to ever fly the world at the age of 23. We, we want people, we need people to understand that we are great. That's part of our narrative. We know that, everyone doesn't know that. This is something that's more important than everything. It's how we portray and how we can progress and how we can learn from each other. We can't just sit there and not speak up for our community and what we believe in. We can be CEOs, and we've done it for a number of years. So that's the real story right now that's not being told. We have to take advantage of technology, otherwise we're just gonna be spinning our wheels. Mark Zuckerberg has made more money than every NBA player combined. That is our platform. That is what we can own. One man could change the world. And one man could change the world. One man can change the world. Here to tell us more about Men of Courage is Sean Wilson from the Ford Motor Company Fund. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you, Stephen. Yes. Appreciate it. So if you look at that, uh, that video we just, uh, we just showed there, the thing that strikes me is that spectacular diversity yes. among the black men you have uh, involved in, that, uh, in the program. And that reflects the spectacular diversity of black men around America. I mean, I think a lot of times when we talk about black men and black males and black male issues, what comes up in people's mind is a very narrow prism. Absolutely. Uh, you're doing a great job of showing this a lot broader than that. That's right, that's right. And you know, these, these kind of initiatives um, uh, go back a long time from a standpoint of Ford Motor Company fund support. So yeah. whether it's a $5 day wage uh, or most recently uh, Freedom Sisters where we highlighted um, you know, little known uh, women of the civil rights movement, right? These, these kind of issues and, and programs are important uh, because we have to stay connected as Ford. We have to stay connected and plugged into what are the most important issues in the community. And so obviously this is a, 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 a very important and growing issue. Um, and how we curated that room, yeah. to your point, was to, to really look for diversity. And it started with two people, uh, Big Sean and Mayor Bing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Bing, so right? I mean, you can't get really it, right? all their that's opposite right. ends of that. That's spectrum. right. That's right. But, you know, we really seen them as intergenerational bookends um, who could then draw each of, 
you know, their, their center of influences to the room. Yeah. So we had, you know, politicians, lawyers, we had um, a gentleman who had just got out of prison a year ago. You saw uh, Shaka Singh Gore in there, who's an amazing person. But we took them through really a three-step approach to one, sharing their story. And that's the other powerful thing you probably noticed about that video is that it was strong in storytelling, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, Narrative. That absolutely, absolutely, and and then we really moved uh, into creating a vision. So you know we didn't want this to be a situation where people get in a room and complain, yeah. right? We wanted this to be about action. We wanted it to be positive. We wanted to really highlight uh, African American men who we, as we know, they are, right? So we had them create a vision, and you saw them actually holding up the vision board. Yeah. I got to be honest, that part we weren't <laughs> sure that was going to go. Was it could, you, work? could you actually get a bunch of men, regardless of black or white or whatever? Right. But could you get a bunch of men to cut out magazines and newspapers? <laughs> and make but it worked. Work. That's right. <laughs> they kept going five more minutes, five more minutes. Um, so they created a vision board, right, to say yeah. this is what the true narrative of African American men should be. And then the final piece was we basically asset mapped and said, now, what are you going to do? Because from a Ford standpoint, we're merely the convener. We're merely the facilitator. Yeah. But it's really about empowering the community and African-American men to own that narrative and advance that narrative. And we support them any way we can. Yeah. Uh, once you sort of own that narrative, it's a question of getting it to the right that's people. Right. And that's that's the tough that's right. problem we have. There are so many. That's right. Kids, uh, young men, old men, even in the city of Detroit and uh, other cities like it, who just are not still uh, seeing that you know that it's possible. That's right. That it's hard. Uh, That's right. That people are going to push you back and knock you down, but right. uh, but you can persevere. The, you know, the the I think the most powerful thing about this this initiative is that you know it's it's really about helping advance a narrative to where. Um, everyone sees African American men as an asset to this country and, right. and the contributions that we've made, yeah. um, and and I think that that comes out um, very strongly in in the program. But the the thing that I noticed when we did the first one in Detroit and then we expanded to Baltimore and Atlanta is that there's such a need for African American men to own their narrative mm -hmm. and to understand and to rebuke um, the negative stereotypes that have existed. So I'll give you a, a quick example. The um, Center for Disease Control did a study and launched it, or uh, came out with it last year as a six-year study. They wanted to um, measure the level of engagement between men and their children, right. and found out that black men were the most engaged right. of any race. Totally counter narrative. Totally counter narrative. What you see in media. Or, That's right. Or other places. So we have to take that that true narrative and push it out and own it and embrace it and continue to to really strive as fathers, as husbands, as contributors to the society. Yeah. Uh, who do you think is getting more out of this? The storytellers? Because, I mean, you can see in that video that there's this real uh, satisfaction, I think, uh, coming over them as they're able to tell this story yeah. in a group uh, that looks like them with people who need to hear that story. Are they getting as much out of it as the kids uh, or the people that you're trying to reach? You know, that's it's hard to judge, yeah. right? It's, it's really hard to judge. You, you, one of the uh, other initiatives that we did along with this was in partnership with the Charles H. Wright Museum. Uh, and this year's theme of the Ford Freedom Awards was Men of Courage. Right. And we really celebrated uh, African American Dave men. Bing was one Dave of Bing the... Dave Bing was one of the honorees. Yeah. Usher came back yeah. and participated, which was great. And, you know, the, the most amazing thing is I had so many... It was a very diverse audience. And I had so many people um, send me emails um, who were not African American saying that it was a powerful night, yeah. right? And right. so I, I think everyone gets something out of it because it's amazing. And here's a the theory of change. By using storytelling to tell the story uh -huh. of African American men, you create empathy. When you create empathy in people's minds, then it changes the way they think about African American men, right. which then changes how they act towards African American men, right? And it's something that I, I think, especially in this day and age, that we can all use more of is empathy, yeah. right? Uh, uh, that point of action, changing yeah. the way people behave. I mean, that's not, not more important now. It has never been more important in history than it is right now right. when you see the reactions that people have right. to black men, whether they're on a street corner that's right. in Baton Rouge or, frankly, in the White House. That's right. Uh, that's right. There's this sort of instinctive pushback. Well, and that's that's really the I think that's part of the point is once you can um, you know, once you have that empathy and you can see yourself in that person, it doesn't matter if you're a, you know, 30 or 40 year old, you know, Caucasian housewife. Right. If you can relate 
to, to a, a black father sharing a moment with his child, you just created that empathy, right? Because it's about parenting at that point. Right. Um, and, and I think we have more in common than we have different. You know, this isn't about choosing sides, right? This is really about uni unifying more than anything and yeah. saying we have more in common than, than we do right. But you apart. need to see you what we see have in that's right. common. And that's why I think it's important for companies like Ford, uh, you know, to, to create that platform, to yeah. be able to do this and not be scared to, to venture into tough subjects because at the end of the day, we value um, the African-American community and how they, you know, support us through purchasing vehicles, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right. So we have to value them and say to them, hey, we hear you and we're going to find a unique and uplifting way to, to tackle this issue with you. All right, Sean Wilson, thanks very much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Absolutely.